you're watching part two of me talking about all of my favorite EDs, you should watch part one and the original video that is the list before you get to this one, obviously. This is the first time I'm recording one of these after having actually seen the reactions to the previous video, uh, but I don't remember anything I wanted to respond to. Oh, I guess just that, yeah, Fly Me to the Moon, not my favorite, not my favorite ED. But you know what? I should have had Thanatos, If I Can't Be Yours, from End of Ava, from, uh, you know, what is technically episode 25. I mean, it's it's difficult to consider it an ED since it does occur halfway through the movie, but it is kind of just the ED of what is considered episode 25 by the movie. So, um, I don't know. But if I did put it on the list, it would be pretty high up. It's a great fucking song. At number 40, I have the first ED of the second season of K-On. All of the K-On EDs are absolute classics for reasons that should be obvious. Aside from the fact that they're all great songs, they all have fantastic videos, which are all staged as though they were like real music videos for this fictional band. But what's interesting about them is that the style is very different from what the band in the show actually plays. You know, Hokago Tea Time is mostly known for these sugary, upbeat, super sweet songs that have lyrics like Fua Fua Time. And, uh, you know, the EDs are like a little bit heavier, darker, more rock and roll. They um, paint the band as more of like a fashionable, like, Something more akin to, like, what the band from Nana would be performing, basically. Um, which I think is really interesting of a decision to make. And, like, whereas the first ED was more going for that, like, vaguely gothy Lolita kind of atmosphere, um, the second one is very much in the opposite direction. It's all pink and sweets and sugary. And uh, it's got all this cake imagery. They're, like, literally walking through a gigantic cake. But it's all done with this this sort of attitude that, um, I don't know, it's it's a very fashionable ED, that is for sure. The, the way that the girls are all dressed is excellent. The overall aesthetic, the timing of shots, the way that the the performance happens, like, it's it's amazing how well they capture the attitude of, like, a band in a music video with Mio, like winking twice to the beat of the 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 symbols and uh the listen she puts her hand up to her face at the end that looks really great just like lots of striking imagery that matches the song in a way that you know makes it feel like you are watching a great music video for this song um the only reason this one falls so low on the list is that it is my least favorite song of the three i actually think it's probably a even better video than the first video than Don't Say Lazy. Um, even if the outfits are less iconic than the Don't Say Lazy outfits, I think this one has the most, like, concept to it, the most of a, like, story going on through the scene, and just all the little animations, like, of the girls walking through the cake are really adorable. And it's still a good song. I think the chorus is really memorable. It's got this kind of, uh... I don't really know... How I would describe the style of music, I mean, it's pretty much just a rock and roll song, but, like, again, it's very focused on that that stylish element. This feels like the kind of rock music that, like, a stylish Japanese girl would listen to on the basis of my understanding of, you know, what would I compare it to? Like, Paramore or something? But even then, it's, like, too light and poppy to be quite like that. Like, again, it reminds me of the band from Nana, Trap Nest, but, like, it's a little bit fluffier than that. Um, I don't know. It's a unique flavor, I guess, but, yeah, you know, again, I don't quite love, love it as much as the other two songs. Still, though, great fucking song and video. Absolutely wonderful to watch. Definitely deserving of being on my list. At number 39, I have the Stella Nomaho ED, which was one that really had taken me by surprise because, I mean, the nature of the show is that it's a cute girls doing cute things show, but particularly angled around game development. And the OP is like the kind of OP you would expect the show to have, which it is a lot of fun because it has a lot of pixel art and shit in it. But the ED is 
just like this electronic song that lightly features vocals from what sounds like it could be the main voice actress. I'm not even sure. I haven't looked into it or anything. But um, video-wise, it's basically just um, like a black slash white void full of colored shapes. Um, it's not necessarily noteworthy though it is pleasant like it's fun to look at and it fits well with the sound of the song but i just think this is such a good song it's just a great electronic pop song with really interesting sparse vocals and um i i remember describing it as future bass when it first came out i don't necessarily know my electronic genres but it sounds like a song that my brother shade made when he was deliberately making a future bass song so that was sort of my basis, but uh, as you may be aware, I rapped over this song. That's right. This song was the birth of the Emotional Anime Raps album duology that I have made um, where I, I take anime songs and rap over them. So if you haven't heard my song for Stella the Magic, I will hopefully remember to put a link to it in the description, and if not, I'm sure somebody will link it in a comment, and I will pin that comment. But uh, a lot of people seem to like that song. It's one of my most liked songs, one of my most broadly accessible songs since it, uh, it's, you know, not weird, <laughs> aside from the fact that I'm rapping over an anime song. But um, it's just because they had left so many holes in the song, really. Like, I couldn't find an instrumental version, but because there were so few vocals in it in the first place, I just rapped over the song as it is. So, um... Do I like my rapped version more than the original? Yeah. But it's still great. At number 38, I have the first ED of Seikon no Quasar, which is a show that I adore. Um, it is a very perverse and trashy, but like on purpose kind of a uh, of fan service action show. And the ED is written by Tom Hack, who also wrote all of the k -On EDs, and it very much is in the vein of those where it's like basically trying to be a music video, but one with a very odd and distinctive arrangement of elements, because it uses some of the, the religious imagery and of course all the fan service from the show um, with this like dark toned like rock song, this like kind of edgy gothy rock song. Um, but sung by the voice actresses from the show, not unlike the k on EDs. Um, but combined with all this imagery of, like, bathtubs, and there's this one shot of, like, the nun on a ladder that's, like, in the library, like, going across the shelves as, like, a light flickers on and off. And it looks really cool, but it's just kind of a what-the-fuck image. Um, imagery of the characters, like, opening their shirts and taking their clothes off, and, like, all that stuff has this... It's, like, oddly sensual for being also trashy. Like, uh, yeah, there's there's just something about this ED <clears throat> that's, like, artful. It's, it's, which I guess I was, is how I would describe Quasar in general. It's, like, deliberately being as trashy as possible, but, like, with a sense of artistry about it in a, in a very postmodern kind of way of, like, throwing this, like, gaudy, garish kind of, um, I won't say self-importance, but, like, you know, throwing highbrow imagery at something that is being as lowbrow as possible, and this ED captures that well with, with a firm tongue-in-cheek. I mean, throughout the whole ED, there's images of the characters, like, in bathtubs or falling into this, like, the, this, like, flood water that has covered the earth. And then in the very last shots, there's, like, one brief image of all the girls, like, in towels and, like, one of them's having her hair blow-dried. And it's the perfect capstone to the whole thing, as well as um, one of the characters, like, closing a window at the very last beat. Um, yeah, it's a super fucking fun ED. I've watched it a lot of fucking times. The song is pretty good. It's not as good as any of the K-On! songs. It does have these, like, very deep, bassy drums that uh that give the whole thing this like turbulent feel that's kind of cool but um the actual melody of the song is just okay like it might get stuck in your head but it's not it's not as catchy as you know um the listen which i just talked about it's uh, well 
I mean, I do like it a little bit more than Listen, but like barely. It's it's in the same category, but not as good as the other K on EDs. Still, though, again, this is one where the imagery is a huge part of the appeal. The fact that it's just uh, so dripping with sexuality and uh, particularly all the bathtub stuff, because I'm just a huge fan of those giant standalone bathtubs, like that, you know, the famous Nisei Monogatari scene, like. That is my aesthetic, so this video just speaks to me in, in kind of a personal way with all the bathtub and sexual imagery. Um, yeah, it's a fun time. At number 37, I've got the Kaiji ED, which is this very down and out, slow paced, like western theme. It's like a, an acoustic ballad, but with a decidedly like uh, old wild west kind of flavor to it. It's driven by this gorgeous, like, fiddle melody that's playing through the background and the vocals, which are like an Enka-style vocal, I guess, with this uh, this deep-voiced guy just sort of crooning about, you know, the, the sadness of uh, the situation. And, yeah, I mean, if you've seen Kaiji, you know that it is a... It's a very, like... It's a depressive show because even though it's like a, a high intensity thriller, the main thrust of it is um, just like this endless suffering that Kaiji goes through because of um, having been saddled with this debt that he can't escape from. And he's just playing these endless like death games trying to escape. And the song has this. I guess it it feels like an ode to all the people who who sort of perish along the way as you know Kaiji continues his journey and other lives pass before his and the endless struggle to make it somewhere it's just such a like it's such a song that even though it sounds so good like all the melodies are so good the song is like barely held together you know because there's just such thin instrumentation that's all um you know, that's all like just kind of clanging and despondent and if it weren't for the vocals then it would sound like really barren, you know? Um, but there's all these like western sound effects and stuff in there that, that also liven it up and just the way that the guy sings lines like Nasakenante sounds really cool. Um, the video has this this swagger of uh, Kaiji walking towards the camera in like silhouette um, as it just like pans over shots of him like sitting around in the city looking sad it's just a great sad boy anthem really um i i think it's really fucking badass at number 36 i have the second revolutionary girl utena ed virtual star hase gaku which uh one of my favorite things about Revolutionary Girl Utena is the dual themes. The J.A. Caesar choral rock theme songs. He invented a genre just for the sake of this soundtrack of known as choral rock, where he has a, a, a chorus of singers over some weird rock songs. And this ED is in that vein. It's the, you know, like the, the original OP and ED are not really stylized that way, they're more traditional. And they're both good. I understand why other people are surprised I don't have them on my list. However, to me, what Utena is about is the fucking choral rock. And uh, even though this ED does not have a full chorus on it, it's, it is done in the same kind of style. And it's one of my favorite tracks on the soundtrack just because it's so, like, it's got this this really driving rhythm and these fucking wailing guitars, particularly at the start where it's like... <laughs> Um, I love how, like, obnoxious the vocals are in the chorus, where she's just singing in this super high register a bunch of, like, similar sounding words, which is, of course, you know, the typical style of the songs in the, in the, uh, chorus sections. I think all the, the guitars and bass just noodle around each other really well, create a great fucking, again, driving feel to the song. Um, it's a head bopper. If you listen to the full length, there's like a pretty killer guitar solo in it as well. And um, also like the remastered version that's on the Angel Creation, namely Light OST, is probably the best version of the song. But, you know, nonetheless, I still like it in the show, especially because of the imagery of the silhouetted Utena going up the elevator. Um, I love the, like, weird little aspect ratio shifts throughout the video, how, like, you know, it's like... It's just a part of the screen that is the elevator, and that, you know, 
makes the sense of motion like even stronger. I love the just brief cuts to her and Anthe and stuff like that. Um, it's just a really stylized and cool visual. It's it's I guess it captures what I like about Utena really well um, in a way that I would say the first ED really does not. You know, so uh, yeah, for me, like this is my association with. Utena is is this style. At number 35, I have the Welcome to the NHK ED Odoru Akachan Ningen by Kenji Otsuki. My first exposure to him before he went on to sing on all of the uh, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei OPs. I fucking love Kenji Otsuki's voice, and this song is just madness, and it spoke to me very powerfully when I first watched Welcome to the NHK because I was one of those people who basically was a hikikomori aside from the fact that I was still in high school so I was still going to school but like aside from that I did not leave my room at all and you know I watched Welcome to the NHK while I was sort of in that state and because I you know historically am into rock music heavy rock music um, and basically madness this ED, like, was exactly what being a hiki, like, the, the, the emotions that came with it felt like to me. Um, you know, I know it, it, it it's different for everybody, but for me, that kind of out-of-control, maddening, I'm, I'm losing my mind and, uh, and, and lost in a world of my perverse delusions and manic uh, highs and lows is exactly what this song captures and, um, and how I felt. So, like, it opens with this dizzying piano that's just going all the fuck over the place over this heavy rock instrumentation. It creates this, like, chaotic whirlwind of sound that's, that's kind of elegant at the same time. Like, you're, you're about to see something that is uh, as, as high and low brow combined, wrapped into one as it could be, until it just... You hear the and then it just fucking goes totally insane. The guitars rip into this enormous riff. The that riff is fucking legendary, and um, over just like all the other instruments going totally insane. Um, you know, once you finally get to the verse, there there's some respite, a, a normal chord progression playing. But the lyrics are all hilarious. It's all about, of course, you know, losing your mind and wanting to just go back to being a baby, basically. Um, just being a in a dancing baby human. <laughs> An odoru akachan ningen. And, uh... You know, when you get to the chorus, it's like this slamming chorus. It's a fucking, it's just a, such a fun track. And the imagery is insane because it's all of these like weird, gross little perverse mascot characters um, undulating and uh, being just being gross in general. And yeah, it's, it's ex just one of those EDs that the moment you see it, you know it's going to be stuck in your brain for the rest of your life. You're never going to forget having seen, unless you block it out, the Odru Akachan Ningen uh, theme. But yeah, th I mean, this this song is very much in line with the style of Kiniku Shoujo Tai, um, the band that Kenji Otsuki is a part of. I mean, I assume that they performed this ED, unless it was just him. I always saw it credited just to him, but... You know, whatever the case may be, this is what their style is. So look into them if you're interested in this. But, uh, yeah, um, it's wild, it's crazy, it's off the rails, and it's just like how I felt when I was a hikikomori. Uh, I should also address just the fact that, like, some people have pointed out that I basically, uh, seem to like anything that has screaming in it. And it's not true, I don't like anything that has screaming in it, but I will give anything extra points for having screaming in it. I do think screaming makes all music better, regardless of genre, regardless of what it is. And this song kind of exemplifies why I feel that way, because um, just screaming is how you c communicate the psychic pain that you are feeling from living on toilet earth. So, you know, this song, that FUNGYA! At the end, perfect example of the kind of scream that, uh, that I come for. At number 34, I have the legendary Umineko no Naku Koroni ED, um, La Divina Tragedia by Jimang, which is best known for the meme, Oh Desire, 
uh, as the, the chorus of the song goes, Nyami o kini saku wa o desire Sacrifice sheep to God! Um, it's the greatest. It's the best ever. I was already a fan of Jemang before this ED because of the fact that he is um, just a weird-voiced singer who works with the group Sound Horizon. Um, you may know Sound Horizon for Linked Horizon, who did the Attack on Titan OP, which was just shy of my list, if I'm being honest. I do like the Attack on Titan OP quite a bit, but um, yeah, Sound Horizon's a cool group. Jemang has some pretty cool songs with them, but uh, nothing as heavy and ridiculous as this song, and uh, it's mostly just his voice. He has such a weird, hilarious, awesome voice, and it sounds great, especially in this song. In the early part of it, when he's singing like, Kono yoru ga owari, ware wa nani o motomu. Just the way he like rolls his M's and shit. It's bizarre and great. Uh, he he sounds awesome. The only reason really that that I don't love this song even more is that all the instrumentation sounds so th synthetic and fake. Like, if there was maybe real drums or something, this song would sound a little bit better. It's not the best produced. Um, you know, his voice is, like, a little too overpowering in the mix. And the imagery of the ED is is fine. It's basically just a bunch of shots of the mansion um, from the show. It's whatever. It looks... It, it's aesthetically pleasing, but not really that memorable or cool. It's mostly the song that you're going to remember for... Nyami o hikisaku o desire. Um, which is enough. More than enough. To land it at 35 on my list. Great fucking song. A lot of fun to sing along to, obviously. Um, there is video of me doing karaoke of this one somewhere. Um, I found it on my blog. I was going through my blog, my my sword is unbelievably dull .wordpress com, which has been defunct for the last couple years because I lost the password. But um, I was going through all my old Otakon posts, and there's 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 a bunch of links to karaoke videos that are still up in there. If anybody, for some reason, I, I've seen that somebody has been linking all my karaoke's in the comments when I bring them up. So for whatever reason, if that's something you want to watch, is me badly singing anime songs, go check them all out. At number 33, I've got the ending theme of Golgo 13, Queen Bee, which is one of the, I think, OVAs or movies uh, of Golgo 13 that came out in the late 80s or early 90s. Now, I'm not, like, the most familiar with Golgo 13. I haven't seen a whole ton of the different incarnations of it. I just happened to watch Queen Bee one time with May. We did a video where we talked about it, I think, in one, in one of our old movie night videos. Um... And I just fucking loved this song that plays in it called Turquoise Blue. It plays actually at both the beginning and end of the movie. There's two different versions, one where they're singing in English, one in Japanese. I think with different singers and like a whole different arrangement of the song. Um, and both versions sound great, but the English version is just this ultra, ultra sensual funk song. It's definitely in the category of pre-packaged future funk, but it's just dominated by this huge, fat bass playing all throughout. This groovy, funky, thick bass line that just sounds incredible. Um, and over top of that, some really great uh, duet vocals, male and female. Um, the guy sings throughout the verses. He has a cool sounding voice. And then when you get to the chorus, that's when it really opens up with the showered by this neon light. I wonder what you do to satisfy that empty heart. Do you invite the man into your arms and make believe he'd played the perfect part? And played it just for you, my lady. That's right, he keeps singing, That's my lady, through the verses. It's fucking hilarious and really good. Um, this is one of those songs I could just listen to, like, endlessly. So, of course, I rapped over this one, too. Because there was a lot of space in the song, I modified it a little, and I put it on emotional anime raps, too. Mine is just a, a uh, disgusting sex song. But, um, nonetheless, I had a lot of fun making it. And um, 
I would recommend listening to that and the original version of the song, of course. The video is really nothing to speak about because it's, you know, this is the ending of an OVA, so they just play, like, the whole song. It's not, like, a short theme. It's mostly just over credits and, like, a shot of Golgo's back. There is parts where, like, it cuts to just, like, some of the kills that he got in the OVA, but, you know, it's not, like, an original video. Mostly, I put this one on just because this song is dope as fuck, and you should definitely give it a listen. At number 32, I have one of the Kyoran Kazoku Nikki uh, EDs, which this show did something really unique that I don't think I've ever seen another show do, where they had like six, I think, EDs, one for each character, each main character of the show, maybe even seven um, or eight or something. There's a lot of fucking characters that I'm looking at on the screen right now. But yeah, they, they had a bunch of different EDs, and depending on what network you watched the show on, they would play them in a different... Order. So when the first episode came out, a whole bunch of different EDs aired with, like, each different station's, you know, take on the episode. So that was really fascinating. And um, when those came out, I was really into Hyoka's ED in particular. I remember listening to it over and over again all night when the video first dropped on Nico Nico Doga. Um, I was super addicted to it. It's this very subtle, just electro-pop song. Um, very, like, low-key and minimal. It does have a, a spacious-sounding chorus, but it never is, like... It's never, like, trying to be, like, over-the-top and poppy or anything. It's just kind of a... You know, it's it's got a nice groove to it, but without being, like, loud or audacious or anything, because singing on it is... I believe her name is Ryoko Shiraishi? Correct me if I'm wrong. The voice actress who plays Hyoka... And um, I really love her voice. She was one of my favorite voice actresses, actresses at the time. And the song is just fucking adorable. I mean, the video has the robot character Hyoka, like, just kind of walking across the screen as all these, like, digital effects and stuff float around him. And it, he's singing about, like, just the sad state of having been born a robot with no mother and father and, like, trying to seek human connection and, like, understand the world around him. And, uh, you know, it's, like, kind of sad, kind of cute, melancholy. The voice, I just love her voice so much, <laughs> particularly in this song. It's a shame she, I don't think, I don't know of any other anime songs that she actually sings in. Um, but uh, this one is delightful. I rediscovering it was like a nostalgia bomb. I was just like, oh yeah, the fucking Kyoran Kazoku ED. I love that one. Because I still have that memory of, you know, w watching it over and over and over again all day. So yeah, this is kind of a, I guess, a, a rarer, more obscure ED. You have to search Kyoran Kazoku Nikki Hyoka ED in order to find it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a delight. Re find one with subtitles that are actually readable because a lot of the quality on the uploads is dick but if you can find one with readable subtitles or just download the show and find it that way it's a good show um it's a very strange show i would recommend watching it at number 31 i have an ed that i knew was going to piss a lot of people off the first hunter hunter ed just awake by fear and loathing in las vegas mostly pissing people off because i didn't put any other eds from the show on there and i'll tell you right now other than Hunting for Your Dream, I don't really care about any of the other ones. Um, most of them I find completely unmemorable, don't care, boring. Uh, but I do love Hunting for Your Dream. That one just barely didn't make the list, and I do love the way that that song like, cuts in during the episodes of that arc. That's like probably the best part. Um, in fact, maybe it would have made the list if I had found a video that didn't just uh, cut in like after that, you know, when I was looking through the EDs. Um, it's a pretty solid Galneria song, but it is a lot more, like, straightforward and just kind of uh, formulaic than a lot of theirs. You know, I don't love it as much as I do Alsatia or Cause Disarray, which both are on my lists, but, you know, it's still a really good song. But nonetheless, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Just Awake, which was mine and I think most people's introduction to Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas at a time when you could not find any of their songs because uh, they named themselves after a much more famous book and movie foolishly um so yeah and they didn't have like a, i think dance and scream might have been out but like that was their only album at the time so um i just remember hearing the song and being completely blown away the first time i heard it because 
On the one hand, yes, there are these weird vocoder vocals that sound ridiculous and all these like hyperactive, super glistening keyboards. But underneath that is one of the most fucking killer like metal drum and guitar you know, leads imaginable. Like, the drums in the song are fucking awesome. They're just going completely ape shit. The, the fills sound fucking insane. Um, yeah, I absolutely love the heavy metal drumming. And then the, like, dueling guitars, like, uh, the riffs that cut in here and there sound, they, they, they just shred. The guitars fucking shred. And so you've got this song where you're bouncing between these, like, upbeat, fun, party dance, you know, like, keyboard parts, and then all of a sudden, this insane shredding guitar, and you're like, what the fuck is going on in this song? How is, how is this possible? How can these musical elements be all in the same track? How can we be going from, to, yeah, that's the appeal of uh, of a fear and loathing, the dance and scream, as their first album was called. Um, this song just sounds incredible. I mean, the way that they are able to pull these elements together. Um, is insane to me. It's so tightly woven. The way that, like, throughout the verse, it's like these kind of deliberate harsh cuts between like the the two different sounds. I say harsh cuts, but like they 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 flow well into each other. It's just that like it's always like a dramatic moment of like, and then it becomes light, and then it becomes dark, and then all of that swirls together in the chorus for something that has like all the musical elements at once and gives way to the vocals to come to the forefront. Um, this is a fucking amazing party song. I would love... I, I want to see this band live so badly. I want to lose myself in a fear and loathing mosh pit. Please, some anime convention, please bring fear and loathing. Uh, I warn you, there will be injuries, but it's okay. Because it'll just be me. I'll just be causing and, and, and receiving all of the injuries. You can, uh, f you can foot me with the bill for everybody's hospital stay. At number 30, we're starting to get into the category of songs that I regularly listen to in my day-to-day -day life, and this is Roundabout by Yes, the first ED of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And, I mean, most of what I would like to say about this is just how cool it is that it's even a thing. I mean, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the musical references in the show are extremely important to me, not only because of the fact that, obviously, they're integral to the story, the author has such interesting taste, he likes all this, you know, 70s and 80s American rock and prog music, um, you know, makes references to all that stuff in the story, but also that that had such an influence on the people who were influenced by him. You know, I uh, grew up with the Boogie Pop and Others light novel, which the author also makes tons of references in in all of his naming conventions to that same era of music and a lot of the same bands out of direct influence from Jojo. So, you know, that, that trickle down effect sort of, uh, reached to me. And, um, I really love a lot of that music that I've discovered through those means. And also th this song, you know, I, even though I knew about yes for a very long time as a big prog fan, I had never really gone and listened to them until I was made aware of roundabout by Jojo starting up. So, um, I absolutely love the song. I think it's one of the most just iconic prog songs. It's so fucking insanely cleanly produced and technically proficient you know like it's it's only a few instruments but they're all playing stuff that sounds completely insane stuff that you can't believe even sounds good over each other because what the bass and guitar are doing is completely different almost unrelated but they they coalesce in a really special way and then when those you know frenzied keyboards kick in on top of all that it just sounds so fucking good that the tones of the instruments these guys they knew how to pick the perfect sounds for their instruments to make um and uh, i love the way the vocals sound as well um it's just all around such a tight fucking song and it just yeah it, it's very satisfying to listen to 
uh, to say the least. And so, you know, this is like JoJo finally getting its its proper adaptation, if you will, one that's going to go all the way, and for them to, you know, to put the effort into acquiring the rights to use all this Western music that is referenced by the manga, you know, this manga that's was like 20 years old by the time this even um, became a thing, maybe more than 20 years old, probably like closer to 25 years old. Uh, yeah, that's it's really something special. I'm really glad they went through with that and introduced so many young people to Roundabout, probably unexpectedly since like the uh, to be continued meme became such a big thing on the internet, which I mean, it's just that it was that perfect, you know, that that, that guitar riff leads so perfectly into that idea of the two like you know it, it lends itself so well to that and them playing the song at the end of each episode was a genius move um it, you know the actual ed itself is pretty cool too because one of my favorite things about jojo has always been the idea that it, it takes place over generations and that it's like this ancient evil that cannot be stopped that keeps returning to fuck with this family and like the way that the uh, the outro seems to like show the the whole history of how this mask came to be before it would you know eventually come to fuck with the lives of the JoJo's is really cool. And then I didn't even know until just now that they that the part two ED like continues with the song. Like it plays the next section of the song and the camera starts moving up instead of to the left and like it shows you know the stuff relevant to part two. I obviously never made it that far in the anime, but, um, yeah, that's really neat. I think it's a fucking dope-ass execution and just such a good song choice. I thought about putting Walk Like an Egyptian on this list as well, and I would have if it had gone all the way to 100. It, like, just barely didn't make it. Um, I'm not a fan of every JoJo ED. Like, a lot of them are just songs. I, like, I mean, Walk Like an Egyptian is not a song I would listen to normally. I just like that it thematically is relevant to the story. Um, but, you know, a lot of the EDs are just not songs I particularly care for, but Roundabout is a, is a classic. At number 29, I have the Nemo Scene ED, Cause Disarray, by Galnerius. I talked about the OP Alsatia in my OPs video. There was, like, a four-track CD that had both of these songs on it that came out around the time of the show that I listened to a quite a bit. And while I don't love Cause Disarray as much as Alsatia, it is still a phenomenal song, a great ED. Um, it's one of the best choruses, I think, that Galnerius has ever written. And uh, the full-length song is actually a lot cooler than this ED version would, would, would really lead you to believe because this sounds kind of like just a power ballad, but whereas it, it goes from this this twinkling, sad sounding first verse into the like the power ballad chorus, the cause to Sereki Samuki Dokua Genjitu Minari Ne Kazanaru whatever. Um it goes from there into this really technical, hard, like, breakdown section. And you hear the beginning of that at the end of the ED, but it actually keeps going into, like, this crazy-ass keyboard solo, and it keeps getting heavier and more intense, and then there's this giant guitar solo and all that. It's a great fucking song, but, uh, you know, even just in the ED size, you hear a lot of great stuff, particularly that chorus, once again. The imagery is really interesting. I mean, Nemo Scene is about a bunch of immortal... Uh, women who, well, or at least, I don't know about immortal so much as um, they cannot be killed. Their, their bodies regenerate. And so there's a bunch of imagery of them in, like, Shibari, but with barbed wire, which is really cool. Um, this the shot at the end of the main girl, like, standing up naked, all covered in barbed wire, like, trying to fucking fight back. It's cool shit. Um, you know, I always kind of wish Nemocene pushed that imagery a little harder in the OP and ED. There's, like, hints of cool-looking shit and then other stuff that's just okay. Um, you know, not quite legendary status, but when you got a couple of, you know, cool EDs full of Galnerius music and naked chicks in states of distress, uh, what more can I say? It's a good time. At number 28, I've got the Trigun ED, which you could not possibly imagine a song that better captures the feel of wandering a desert planet than this one. And it's all about that guttural, fuzzy, earthy, 
heavy bass line playing through the whole song, overpowering the mix. In fact, you might be so distracted by this bass line you wouldn't even notice just how lush all the accompanying instrumentation is. There's all this odd percussion, nothing that just sounds like drums, but like, you know, unique sort of uh, probably Middle Eastern influenced or just desert influenced uh uh, you know, sounds being played in the background, odd instruments, some orchestral instrumentation. Like, this is like, uh, the song almost like poses as a rock and roll song while really not quite being one. Um, it's very different. I can't think of another song I've heard that quite sounds like it, but it's it's just led so much by that earthy, earthy bass. Um, and the singer who I would say represents the open skies of that desert with the, the heavily reverbed soaring vocals. I mean, I guess the fact that the first thing he says is blue sky might be part of why I make that association, but um, I love the way the guy's voice sounds. He's got this like odd twang in his voice that sounds cool um the the like violins or whatever hanging in the background of the track just give it so much flavor and uh yeah i mean i could listen to that bass all goddamn day the imagery is just cool trigun shit trigun's a you know uh, as i said about the op it's a show that has a really cool aesthetic and a really great like um setting concept that you know, maybe isn't always captured as beautifully in the show, but like in the OP and ED, it looks really great. And the, the ED is a bit more aesthetically focused. It's more about like just um, stuff that I would want on my wall, I guess. Like the images are like cool wallpaper shots of the Trigun world and Vash just looking like a badass wandering this desert wasteland. Uh, yeah, it's a dank ass song. It's funny because I remember not even really caring for it back when it was on Toonami, but uh, a few years later, when I listened to it again, I was like, wow, this song is fucking great, and I want to listen to it forever. I don't actually know who makes it. Never looked into it. Probably should. At number 27, I have the Akagi ED by Maximum the Hormone, made for the show, and uh, this one is just fucking great. It really speaks more to the strengths of Maximum the Hormone than the uh, the Death Note Opian ED, even though I probably like those songs a little bit more. Those ones are more of the, like, new metal slash, like... Those ones are a little bit more of, like, the new metal style that really became more prominent on Buiki Kaisu, whereas this song harkens back to their hardcore punk-tinged days of the previous album, Rockin' Pogoroshi, which is also phenomenal. And um, just how tightly they are able to weave, like, those hardcore punk elements, the heavier elements, the poppier elements, like, that's kind of what they're known for, is, like, combining this pop, this punk, and this metal all into a song that it will change gears constantly while flowing into each other perfectly and with a lot of technical proficiency. So, uh, yeah, this song does that in spades, especially the TV edit. It's only, like, a minute long, and it goes through, like, a lot of different parts of the song, um, which is just generally a good-ass song as it is. Um, the video is hilarious because it's cutting between all these, like, live-action shots of people playing... Um, God damn it, not Shogi. Mahjong. And, uh, like, shots of just, like, little pieces of official art of Akagi, I guess. But, like, not moving, but the camera is, like, moving over it and, like, cutting to itself. If you watch it, you'll know what I mean. It looks really goofy and hilarious, which fits with the tone of the song. Which, while heavy and fun and intense, is also, like, very tongue-in-cheek. I mean, there's a burp at the end of the song. God, I love Maximum the Hormones so much. To me, they are like the most wholesome music that there is. Their, their music makes me feel like like the warm embrace of home. At number 26, I've got the other Mahjong anime, Saki, which has the most goddamn adorable ED I've ever seen. Um, the song is a ton of fun. It's one of those energetic Genki Anison voice actress song, you know, pop things where... The chorus explodes open. That's a bunch of fun. Always adorable. The way that the little chibi characters are animated doing their, their arms up when they say why, why. 
is uh, fucking adorable. But this this ED also has like a little story going through it because it's all centered on the most adorable member of the main cast, Kata Okayuki, and her um, basically losing a bunch of Mahjong games, getting mad, and then eating one of the pieces and running around as the characters try to chase her down before they all meet at the end and bond. It is so fucking cute. The chibi designs are great. The artwork all throughout it is fantastic. Just the the way that the scenes play out is fun and adorable. It's a great ED. I could watch it over and over again. I love the song. I love all the, you know, the crowd vocal mahjong chanting and shit. It's very Anison. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's fucking it's one of the greats. At number 35, we've talked plenty about Narasaki, the, although I never said his name, the guy from Coltar of the Deepers who did all those Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei OPs. He's been around in the industry doing various things. But uh, finally, we have an actual Coltar of the Deeper song, the Mawaru Penguin Drum ED, Dear Future, which is fantastic. It is a shoegaze track. If you know the genre of shoegaze, you know that it basically means vacuum noises over drums, and uh, that's what we get here. This wailing wall of washed out guitars, just, uh, you know, as as much fucking noise as, uh, as you can generate from the instrument um, over just this, uh, this, this driving backbeat and some twinkling keyboards and stuff. Um, which is all brought together by this very smooth sounding vocal, the sparse and uh, and and soft like vocal take, um, which really becomes amazing in the chorus when there's the multi layered sort of uh, what would I describe them as like f- phantom like um, vocals that are saying like this. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics, but um, and it's also hard to imitate the sound without <laughs> without having the multi-tracked vocals. But um, they sound really cool and haunting. I love that the song just never lets up. It's just like this constant jagged um, like because there's this guitar in the background that's playing like a, a very jagged riff, and over that the the overpowering smoother um you know, hail of noise guitar. Um, this is another song that I've rapped over for the Emotional Anime Raps album. If you paused after the Stella no Maho one to go listen to that, you probably heard this one right afterwards, the Dear Future rap. And um, again, it's just because this is a song that leaves a lot of space, so I just kind of filled that space. Um, you know, uh, I love I love the track. I love rapping over it. I love anime and manga! At number 24, I have the Paradise Kiss ED, which is by Franz Ferdinand, a Scottish band that you probably know for the song Take Me Out. Um, They also have the track Do You Wanna, which was a major single in its own right, and it's the ending theme of Paradise Kiss, a show about fashion, and it fits extremely well. And the ED video is super energetic and fun, and I believe was directed, if not animated entirely, by Hiroyuki Imaishi, my favorite director. It's very much his style. Um, It's, uh, you know, ultra-simplified versions of the characters, dancing, running around, um, just having a good-ass time with all these, like, um, you know, magazine covers sort of in the background, these fashion mag covers. Um, and the song is just such a good time. I mean, well, do ya, do ya, do ya wanna, wanna go where I never let ya before? Well, he's a friend and we're so proud of ya. Your famous friend, well, I blew him before ya. Oh, yeah. That's the real lyrics. Um... Yep, I love the song. I am a fan of Franz Ferdinand. Their first album was, you know, one of the uh, one of the first albums I bought when I was getting heavy into music. wasn't my favorite, but it was one of the first. And um, this is a good ass song and a good ass video. There's nothing more to say. You should check it out. At number twenty three, I have the Spice and Wolf ED, uh, Ringo Biori, I believe it's called, or uh, the Wolf Whistling Song. And this one is that just right combination of cutesy and haunting 
it's kind of like a folksy song while also being kind of a poppy song. A lot of it is whistling and these like stabbing pianos that are just playing like blim, 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 blim. But then you got the, the ultra sweet cutesy vocals on top of that with the oddly dark and demented lyrics starting with seven apple on the witch's tree with seven seeds to plant inside of me in springtime i grew a magic song then skipping along i sang the song to everyone really i guess all the lyrics are very memorable and um this is one of those songs i just would sing to myself randomly all the time um yeah uh the imagery is also super fucking cutesy and just really well laid out like each image of the ed has like a nice border around it and it's it's very like clean and pretty looking it's like chibi art style but with like an amount of detail that makes it feel like you know something classy you'd frame on your door something something that your grandma would buy if you will uh, yeah, it's adorable. I like it a lot. At number 22, I have a ED that I've seen at the number one spot on many, many lists, and, and deservedly so. It is the Bake Monogatari ED, Koyo Shiranai Monogatari, composed by Ryo, which, uh, if you know any of his music, should be obvious because all of his songs sound exactly the same. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a really fun track driven by these epic piano melodies that play all throughout that give it this emotional gravitas while being otherwise a pretty straightforward rock song. Also, the fantastic vocal performance, um, you know, really elevates the song. Though I will say, uh, I think the full-length version of this song is honestly terrible. It's just, like, not well constructed. It, it, it changes gears in a lot of weird ways that don't work well to me but like just the tv size version is great very emotionally gratifying and powerful um it's got this constant rising action through the chorus um you know lyrics that make you think about space since the first thing you hear is like that's altair denebu uh yeah vega then then ah fuck it i don't remember um but yeah, the the character art is really my favorite part of this ED because it's all drawn by Hajime Ueda, who is one of my favorite artists. He did the Fully Cooly manga. He's done some stuff for Faust magazine. He's, you know, basically in the same universe as Nisio Isin is. And so bringing him on board to do this was really cool on the part of Shaft. And just the way he draws the characters is fantastic. I fucking love his artwork. I wish I could have bought one of the um, the figures that they did of the Hajime Ueda style characters. Um, but I love how, like, sexual all the poses are that he puts them into the ED as well. Um, yeah, his character art is a consistently great part of all the EDs of the Monogatari series. But this one, just the shot of, like, the little animation or animatic, I guess, he does at the end of Senjo Gahara singing along to the chorus is fucking adorable and powerful and great. I love the, like, parallax scrolling background um, throughout. I don't know if that's actually a correct use of that term, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool ED. It's very heartfelt and memorable. I wish the full-length version of the song like held up as well as the actual ED length. I know some people will probably disagree with me on that, but I really do not like the full-length version or else this would be a song I'd probably listen to all the time. But um yeah, nonetheless, as an ED, it is excellent. At number 21, I've got the first Gurren Lagann ED underground and by the band High Voltage. And if like if Kazewa Mirai Nifuku was the perfect sound of the desert, this is the perfect sound of being underground. And it achieves that through similar means, a very earthy, prominent bass line. But whereas the one from the Trigon ED was like, um, like really just uh, affected and grungy and like overpowering, this one's very muted and like forced down, even though it's like the loudest sound in the mix. Like it's, it's being forced underneath the cover of these very like tinny and shrill guitars like jangly shrill guitars that are playing this like um this this wild up and down riff that sounds like it's very like chaotic sounding like the way these two interplay with each other um 
creates like an almost disorienting feeling. Like the the whole song is just a uh, it's very rough, and I love that about it. I love how just like um unclean it is and how the vocals sound really great over that just kind of uh, coming in spurts not really sticking to a consistent melody but um, you know like semi shouted over this wall of wailing drums and guitars Um, it sounds really fucking cool I just love the again the tonality of the instruments the mix of them all together and then you get to, right after the chorus, this insane breakdown where they're all just playing super fast. It's like... That part sounds fucking awesome. Um, you know, that's the part where you, where you fucking... Where you fucking flip. Shit! And uh, the visuals are pretty cool, too. Again, communicating the underground feeling. You have the, like... The, like, harsh white shadows on, like, a mostly black backdrop, which is, of course, reversed in the second ED in a genius way. And, you know, everything about that song is, like, kind of the opposite of this one. This one's, like, a a tarnished, like, grungy, uh, you know, underground rock and roll song. And that one's, like, a big, spacious, open party track. It's a great duality of two great songs, but this one's my favorite. And uh, that's it for this episode of my EDs list. We're going to get into the final fucking countdown, numbers 20 through 1, on the next episode. Apologies for this one being late. For those of you actually watching it the day of, uh, you know, I got a lot of shit I got to work on um, post-Otakon, but here you are.